Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer space. Space, space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Historical Recreation, written by Eddie Eddie. Humans are a strange species. Let me tell you a story of how I got involved in human history. I didn't make it, or even affect it, but I am now a part of it. Written into stories and legends. See? It all started at a bar, upon station two above Termaris. I was in a bar listening to a pair of humans complaining about the fact that it had been a long while since they'd been to a proper tourney. At the time, I didn't know what that word meant. My translator lacked the function to understand it. But the way they said it, and the other things they talked about, caught my interest. I asked them why they'd not attempted to set one up here, or on the planet below. The two of them looked at one another and promptly set about arranging such a thing. I was kept abreast of the ongoing events and continually was shocked as to the things required. Metal armor, non-combat or power armor, but plates of metal worn over padded cloth. And even more armor made in tiny links of steel. Weapons that would have no place in a modern battlefield. Swords and maces and other things besides that I still do not know the name of. Nor can I pronounce. More drink than the entire station could drink in half a year, and more besides. A year and a half later, the station was inundated with humans of all shapes and sizes, color and creed. Some were dressed in a finery of the likes I'd never seen. Oh, I'd seen silks and lace before. Rich human traders oft wore them. But not like this. Flowing gowns and dresses, outfits of bright color and all things of the like. It was a spectacular showing of human craftsmanship. Then came the tramping, clanking thunder. A ship had docked, and from its guts came a good five hundred humans, clad in the same battle plate I'd seen my friends making ready, marching in order and ranks like a formal army. I have to say, the noise they made rang in my ears for a few days after. The deck plates shook from the weight of their armor. At their head marched a man in black and white tabard with a red symbol on it, holding a flag high, the only one amongst them who had his helmet off. Every human who'd arrived carried with them food or drink or both. Some arrived carrying bow and handing over meats to be roasted. Others, dressed in fine silks and outlandish outfits, offered what they claimed were foreign delicacies but were just simple bakeries and cakes, but they were received with joy and thanks nonetheless. There were greetings exchanged between old friends, and old rivalries were renewed. It was less than twenty minutes before the first fight started. I got to witness what would soon be occurring all across the station in designated areas. Someone insulted someone else's uh, dame, which I soon learned was a name for a female partner. And very quickly, Swords were drawn, and steel met steel. And was it an experience? A fight more brutal and visceral than I had seen in my entire life. My species is known for its warlike tendencies, and the fact that we are quick to fight. But this fight, just watching it, was exciting. My blood boiled, and I itched to get involved. But I knew that even with my hide and retractable claws, those steel blades would break my bones, and worse. It only lasted a few moments, as several other humans in armor dragged them apart and told them both to wait for the arenas to be set up. A station, built to deal with six to seven thousand people, suddenly had an extra sixteen thousand people turn up. The corridors were flooded, and every space was used. Cargo storage was converted into a titanic food hall, the metal walls covered in thin wooden planks, a huge fake fire set up to cast light and warmth. Tables stretched the length of the entire place with massive benches on either side. Food and drink flowed freely. Gyms were converted into combat arenas, and it didn't take long for the ring of steel on steel to sound out and echo through the halls. A siren call to all of those who wanted to join. Or watch. The park was used for archery and huge tents were set up. For more drinking, eating, and dancing. 
There were people selling things to one another, trading and sharing stories. When asked where everyone would sleep, there was a lot of shrugging and looking around. The answer, in the end, was anywhere there was space. In tents, on benches, on tables, on the floor, about the fire. Some set up more tents in the park and slept there. Mothers returned to their ships and slept there. I was told that this would only last three or four days, yet it felt longer. It was as if the station was no longer in space, but was someplace long ago in human history. A sudden spate in a history that was not my own. Time blurred together. I found myself dragged along here and there as the world around me became a place from long ago. I saw other non-humans looking as lost as me. Some looked scared and hid in their homes. Others looked as if they were just another human madness, tired and worn down. Yet a few, like me, had a shine in their eyes, looked excited and interested, asking questions and trying anything they could. I attempted archery. My species lacked significant depth perception, so while I could draw the bow easily, I struggled to aim properly. Other things I tried was foam fighting, where rather than actual weapons, we used sticks of hardened foam and war padding. I fell in love and started to ask about how I could join in actual combat. Once the fight was over, my foe insisted on dragging me for a drink and a meal. We shared a table. It wasn't long before more joined us. Some in armor, some in sooks, others in chain, and a few more in bright purple shirts with crew printed across them. They were called marshals and seemed to be in charge of the whole affair. We drank, talked, and ate as well. Stories were told of other places and other times, but all of the past. For this was not the place for modern tales. I shared my species' folk tales and received stories in kind. I know not how long we talked for, but when we parted ways, the station's lights were dim and the human alcohol had affected me far more than I expected. Eventually, I gave up on my struggle to reach my small apartment but rather found a warm spot by a fire and slumped down to sleep. I was awoken by a rough shaking, had a splitting headache, and felt as if Sarsnek had made a burrow into my mouth. Though the objects that accompanied my awaken lessened my annoyance. A large wooden plate with food upon it, parts I couldn't identify, black ripe bread, thick cheese, fried meats, and beans. I thanked whoever had given me the plate, but they'd moved on to awaken the next person and pass them their own breakfast. I'm lucky my digestive tract is akin to humans in that I can consume almost everything they can, excluding chocolate and certain very strong spices. So I tore into the meal with gusto. As I ate and drank water going around, I could feel the pain in my head lessening. That day proceeded like the last. Or was it one before that? I cannot remember. But that weekend, I felt as if I'd found something that sang in my blood. It was not just brutal combat, but there was honor and kindness. You couldn't just fight anyone. You had to fight those of equal standing. No bullying the weak or ganging up on the strong just to bring them down. There were other competitions, challenges of craftsmanship, art, poetry, and more. It became a matter of mastery and skill. I attended these two, awed at what these humans could produce with such ancient tools. Skills honed over decades came to shine. Well, I was no poet nor artist, but I was a station engineer and I knew how to work metal. It was then I understood what called to me so. Nothing here was made by nanoforge or matter printer, but all by hand and skill and strength. Everything was a display of mastery in one form or another. It was at these competitions I found this was also a recreation of history in action. There were lords, ladies, dukes and dames. There was an order to things, titles and names. Humans took on personas and actions had different meaning here than they would elsewhere. I was excused from most of it due to being a newcomer, but I tried and I was thanked for it. When it was all over, I awoke on the Monday morning feeling out of place and out of sorts. When it was time to go, everyone packed up and left 
as if suddenly there was a time and needed to leave as quickly as possible. Once everyone was packed up, there was little left to indicate they'd ever been, beyond a few stray arrow fletchings and a rather nasty dent in one of the war plates where someone had missed a weapon strike and hit a soft spot. It ended up being my job to fix it, ironically. I felt as if a part of me had been left behind in that fantastic place, so I asked my friends if it would be happening again, and they laughed. Supposedly, next year we'd be doing it again, though on a different station, with a bit more space since they didn't expect that much response. I asked if I could come to properly participate this time. They said it was fine, but they needed to train me, and I needed my own armor, which was fine by me. That's how I got involved in human history. Every year we go out, and for a weekend my friends and I are no longer a station engineer, an accountant, and a dockport manager. But we're a band of knights, brothers in arms, and we're our own stories carved in the skill and steel, and more than a little foolishness and luck. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click and click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia, Barky, Fudik Yol, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Whiteband420, Lord Azrakal, Arcalian, and Oakfield.